Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm out here in the backyard canoe cathedral shed. I'm working on uh, taking some photos and cleaning up this old Mad River Malasite Kevlar that I found online. It's got some beat up damage to it. And I'm trying to decide, do I put a ton of work into it or find somebody that's ready for a project of their own? Um, but it's got a lot of life left and I'm excited to hopefully unite it with somebody that can give it some use. But in the process of just moving some things around, I've been wanting to shoot this for a while, which was to gather all my personal canoe paddles that I pretty much use for various purposes and talk about why I bought them, when I bought them, any stories behind them, and why I use these paddles. Um, most passionate paddlers have more than one paddle, and it'd be cool if people start putting out their own versions of this so we can all learn from each other. Anyway, I've got a few paddles and bags, which I also wanted to talk about, or paddle sleeves, like this black fleece one. Um, so I'll get into those and which bags I use to help protect my paddles as well. But this is a good smattering of most of the personal paddles that I use. There might be a few others around in the back of vehicles, but this will cover it and I'm excited to get into it today. So let's go. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start with kind of the paddles that I mostly use day to day. And then I have a lot of odds and ends that have been with me for a long time that I just have fun with and I'll never part with. But to start with my day to day, as you can see, I got the Bendy Branches shirt on. There's uh, several Bendy Branches paddles that I just love. Uh, the newest one from them is the Black Pearl Carbon Straight. And a lot of my paddling is flat water, lazy moving water. Um, even occasional volcanic rock around here, but not a lot of heavy hits. I love this paddle. It's light, 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 light. One of the reasons I love it so much is that knife-like edge. I do a lot of in-water return strokes where I'm pulling the paddle through the water and just having that knife surface like that for quiet in-water return is great. There's very little spine until you get kind of up toward the very top of the paddle here. So it's just really smooth. It's a good size for my body carbon shaft all the way along and then a grip that is kind of a modified T if you will and that allows the paddle to move in my hands but I still have a really positive grip on it. Um, I usually carry with me a 58 inch because I use this a lot for solo but if I was in one of my tandems where I sit a little bit lower I'd probably go a little shorter. So that's the Black Pearl Straight. A paddle that is always in my bag with me as well is the bench shaft version. This is a 52 inch, but I often use this paddle with my North Star Magic, where I do sit a little bit lower and sometimes I'll use a 50 inch. The bent shaft is gonna give me that nice vertical paddle shape right here. But what you can see is it's just got a really powerful catch. It actually spoons a little bit here. You're, and, and then has a nice little, kind of just a slightly raised dihedral to reduce flutter. Grip is very similar as the other grip, but is a asymmetrical grip, meaning we're not going to be moving this around. It's gonna be in one position. So it's cut down in for my hands a little bit. This is my fitness paddle. This is the paddle I'm gonna to use to cover miles and it's light. Both of these paddles though, because they're just straight up carbon at the end, you gotta be a little bit more careful with dings and bangs. So I try to use this more in deep water, but it has taken a few shots, both of them, and they held up pretty well. So I wouldn't hesitate to take these into the boundary waters at all. And uh, they're always in my bag. All right, then the other two paddles that are kind of the brother sister that are similar to the Black Pearl, but offer a little more durability and just have a great feel in the water are the Sunburst Straight and Bent from Bendy Branches again. Love about this paddle is it now has the rock guard tip all the way around. So it's gonna be a little bit more durable for taking shots. They do a two ounce glass over this paddle. So it still has a really nice knife-like blade through the water for my in-water return strokes, but it's a little bit more durable with that glass over the wood. It's pretty as heck. The polished carbon shaft is really nice on the hands. It's got a little bit of an oval to it. And then the grip and the straight is asymmetric in wood, which I really like just for all the little like open hand. It just has that great, homey feel on your hands. And I use the bench shaft quite frequently as well. Uh, again, a little bit more of a efficient stroke, a little more fitness based, covering miles. But those four paddles really make up what is you're gonna see in most of my videos day to day. And then there's one other paddle from Benny Branches that's always in my bag. And this is the Expedition from Branches. 
the Expedition Plus. Now we go to a really burly paddle, and I use this. We got volcanic rock, I have some whitewater canoes. For my type of kind of bang them up paddle, this is the way to go. Now we have that rock guard trip all the way around, extends up even up toward the um, up the shaft of the paddle. We're doing six ounce glass over this, lots of laminations for durability. Look at all the laminations in the shaft of this paddle. That's strength, burliness, and I've had this in my line. It's taking a few little shots and holding up well. It's one of the cool things that Bendy Branches does. They have a really cool, like I think it's a four dip varnish process. So even when you take a shot like this, it doesn't open up the wood. And when we go here to the grip, we have kind of the football grip, which for whitewater, just having that really positive locked in grip is nice. I'm not doing a lot of palm rolls with this paddle. I'm holding on. I like a nice tight grip, but end up tripping up on a rock. I'm not losing my paddle. So the Expedition Plus isn't something I use all the time because you do gain some weight. But when I need rough and tumble, this is pretty much as strong as I need for my type of battling. All right, one of the things that really helps me keep all my paddles organized is this eight paddle rack from Suspense. It's got this nice rubberized uh, texture to it that grips onto the blade really well so you don't drop blades onto the ground. And you can just stuff a lot of paddles in. This can be mounted on your wall and keep your paddles off the ground and easy to grab. And so this is one that I use a lot. Okay, now we go back through history a little bit. These are paddles that I've picked up along my journey in paddle sports that I just love having and I don't intend to sell them. Uh, right here, this is a paddle that Bell Canoes, you know, now called North Star, used to have in their lineup. It was called the Voodoo at the time. It was made by Mitchell Paddles. And again, something you hear me talk about frequently is that knife-like cut. That's why a lot of people like this. This was really a sought-after paddle for freestyle canoeing. It was a nice large blade, so you had a really positive, strong brace. It is a cedar shaft, and if you look, I've had this for years. It's a little bit more beat up because cedar gets a little softer. So it's taken its hits over the years, all the way down to my old golden retriever retrieving it once when I dropped in the water, put a couple teeth mark in it. So I could have probably taken care of this grip a little bit better, sanded and oiled, but when you're covering miles, it doesn't always happen. It has a nice oval. It's a large oval to the shaft, and a lot of people are still looking for these. In fact, for a brief amount of time, North Star had them in the lineup, and I do have a couple brand new ones in bags. This is also the bench shaft version, real spooned out blade. I keep this, but again, that cedar takes a shot, you're gonna see it. Nice oiled grip, something very nice, uh, or sanded, and then you'd oil this grip. It just has a little bit better feel, especially if your hands get tacky, sweaty. The varnish can be a little stickier, so that oil really moves. One of the things I love about this is the size for my hands, that size of the grip. When I'm driving down, getting that top hand power, just gives me a really big surface to push into. So, uh, I would love to have this grip on more paddles. It's not for everybody because it is bigger, but it is one that I enjoy a lot. And really lightweight blade. They are foam filled, so it's not something that I'm gonna take hard shots with. I wanna make these last. Along the same line, and you see a lot of people that really love beaver tails and otter tails. I've had this paddle since I was in college. It needs work. Uh, it's an all walnut gray owl beaver tail here. And unfortunately I must have taken a few shots and it fell, in the, you know, got wet and then you can have cracking. So I'll have to deal with that. I don't use this often here because I just don't have a lot of really deep water. Um, but what people do love is how smooth those in water return strokes can be. Generally when you use a blade, a paddle that's blade is this long, you're gonna go a little longer in your overall paddle. So I think this thing maybe all the way up to a 63, 63 inch. So I use a bent 52 to 50, 58 or 56 straight, but this guy's nice and long. I'll still take this out once in a while. Has a lot of great memories when I was paddling in Madison, Wisconsin in college. So I keep this in the lineup. And I recently had picked up this Grumman, which is kind of the same thing. This is probably like a 1960s paddle, long oiled grip. It's just, it's a, it's a battle ax. I believe it's ash and it's heavy but it's along the same lines and it's fun to have. And if you've you know, own five to six paddles, you should consider putting a beaver tail or an otter tail in there just because it is a different feel. It's a different propeller. 
This paddle also comes from the Bell days. There was a brief amount of time that Bell Canoes was working with Peter Petticombe out of Canada and making these beautiful paddles. There's a lot of cedar in this. It's really lightweight. It has uh, this kind of similar to uh, Bendy Branches, has that rock guard tip or a urethane all the way around it. So it would be durable. Honestly, this thing is mostly something that I keep near the fireplace just to look at. Um, but people use them, it's plenty durable. It has a really nice grip, just for those that are making their own paddles. If you ever get your hands on this grip, you'll enjoy a lot. It is varnished, oh, dropped it once, put a little shot in it, but you don't see a lot of use in this paddle, but boy, it's almost as light as that carbon black pearl. Uh, has a really, really lightweight blade, and it's a 50 inch, so I don't really have a place to use this quite as often, but I love having it. Memories galore. This is not a paddle that I use often at all. It's a Mitchell. It was made for uh, North Star when we did the San Juan River in 2019. I have some footage on my channel on that trip, but it is a burly paddle, really strong on the tip. We use this for a week. Uh, it's got that nice kind of modified T grip, it's real positive. And I just like to keep it around for the memories as much as anything. But Mitchell made some great paddles. It's glassed over, plenty durable. Everybody used one of these on the trip and we didn't have any issues. So I like to keep it. This paddle, I bought to take pizzas out of the oven. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I picked this up at Kent's Canoe and Kayak in Spokane. I traded him a bunch of industry gear, hats, t-shirts. I just had to have it when I saw it. Um, I've used it a few times and what I love about it is if you're like wanting to brace in a canoe and put the thing way up on edge This is like having an outrigger. It's giant. It's definitely not something that you would use at all for daily paddling uh, Made by Clement out of doesn't say where out of Canada So I'm sure some people have these but you don't see them every day It's got a number on it and everything and Kent. Thanks for the find. He's got all sorts of gems if you're ever up in Spokane Swing in and talk to Kent and see what other fun paddles you can find. Okay, I kept a few of these paddles in a bag right here. This is an old Bell Canoe, a canoe paddle bag from Bell Canoe Works. It's uh, probably sewn by Cook Custom Sewing, Dan Cook. It looks like his work, I believe. And what I keep in here are four ergonomic paddles from Bending Branches that they did for one of their anniversaries. And I don't use these a ton, but mostly for tandem. It's their limited edition right here, A-Series. Beautiful, rock guard tip all the way around. Obviously the ergonomic shape you see right off the bat. The idea is when I'm taking a stroke, it helps kind of relieve that bend that we have to make right here. I usually achieve that by opening my hand a little bit right here or not strong grip, but it does have a really just comfortable feel. You know right where you are. It's a gorgeous paddle. I have four of them. I think I have 252s and 250s. If you ever get a chance to pick one of these up, I would definitely add it. When they released these, they came with this little suede leather sheath that you could put on to protect the paddle. Just beautiful stuff. And you don't see these available every day <laughs> in stores anymore, unfortunately, but I have them and I love having them. This will protect the paddle here. I would love to have one for the grip. That's usually where I damage paddles is they fall out of the car and fall in their grip. So I like to keep them in this bag here that I used to use as a salesman bag, but now it just stores my paddles. This one's a great bag from Dan. I believe that what goes tall enough, has a strap around it, so it limits kind of them rubbing together. You can tighten it down. Strap down here, great carry handles, and there's actually foam at the bottom, so when you set this down, you don't have to worry about banging. So if you ever see a bag like that, that might be worth going to your quiver. More easily available is this bag here from Danu Covers. They make canoe and kayak covers, but they also make this awesome bag, and it's probably the best valued bag. I carry them here at Happy Paddling. If you can't find them at your local dealer, it's padded all the way around, heavy duty, duty nylon, a bunch of little places to tie on, you know, sponge, various things, a little pocket here for, for items. It also usually comes with a strap, a shoulder strap that I usually snag up and I don't really need. Bose is over, but what I really love about it is the center partition here. So if you're even using for kayak paddles, you can put a blade on either side. This allows me to put several paddles in and not have to worry about them rubbing and I believe these are kind of right in that $60 range so a great bag to have 
and still currently being produced. On the simpler side of paddle protection, it's just a simple fleece or felt sock. I've been carrying these around for years. Here's an old Bell one, collector's item. And it's just a fleece sock. This would be a good little home project for you and your family. You've got a sewing machine and you can make them any size. Uh, I use this a lot because it doesn't, you know, it's not bulky. I can throw it in the vehicle and it protects again, the grip and the bottom. And that's the same with this old felt one, which you can see picks up a little bit of every debris on the ground, but still really useful. I do have a couple other bags and I wanna finish off this whole tour of the paddles that I use with a paddle that is one of the most near and dear to my heart. And I put it in this entire bag that I picked up. Um, I picked up from one of the vendors I used to work with. This is actually a sup bag, but I love how it really protects one paddle at a time. And this was a paddle that was built for me. And I know there's a lot of canoe paddle builders out there doing beautiful work. Uh, my friend Brad built this for me. He's out of Portland and him and our, our friend John, who unfortunately we lost last year in a river tragedy, really worked a lot on paddles together. And this is a blade size that my body can really handle. And I think that's an important part of your journey is to find a blade size that works for your size. I'm not a really big shoulder, big armed guy. I pick up speed by going faster, more strokes per minute. And if I use too big of a blade, like some of these I showed you earlier, it just gets wearing on my shoulders. This one is perfect. Again, oiled grip that has a really nice feel and a big surface here for my hand to rest on. And this one's just really near and dear to my heart. Uh, looks like I put a little shot in it, but this I plan to carry with me for my whole life. Really lightweight. Brad could tell us more about all the woods he used in this process. But when somebody makes you a paddle like this, it, I mean, I burst into tears when they gave it to me. And I not only think of John, but also of Brad and the friendships and times we had together. So I dedicate all of my paddles to those guys. And uh, I really hope this kind of just helped um, inspire you to maybe add a few paddles to your quiver just to change your feel on the water and have fun with it. Uh, you'll find your favorites and then the next year your favorites might switch just based on kind of your mood of the year or the season. All right, everybody, I hope that was helpful and we'll check in next time. See ya.